Hi everyone, this lesson is on BRCA or BRCA1 and 2 genes and mutations in these genes and the risk for particular types of cancer. So we're going to talk about why these genes are important, what are their functions. We're also going to talk about the types of cancers that are associated with mutations in these genes. And we're also going to talk about some new research showing additional cancer risk if an individual has a mutation in one of these genes. So let's first talk about what BRCA1 and BRCA2 are. So they are both genes. So they are segments of the DNA that encode for a particular protein. BRCA or BRCA actually stands for breast cancer gene. And BRCA1 gene is located on chromosome 17 and BRCA2 is located on chromosome 13. So the importance of these genes really didn't come to public mind until the 1990s. And in the 1990s, this is when mutations in BRCA1 and BRCA2 were identified as pathologic. And more specifically, it was found that BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations cause hereditary breast and ovarian cancer syndrome, or HBOC. So what was found was that patients who had a family history of breast and ovarian cancer were more likely to have BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutations. And later on in this lesson, we're going to talk about which BRCA gene is more common with particular types of cancer. And these particular gene mutations are inherited in an autosomal dominant inheritance fashion, meaning that if a patient's mother had breast cancer and they had a BRCA1 mutation, it only takes one copy of a BRCA mutated allele to increase the risk for cancer for that particular individual. And the reason why these BRCA genes are so important is because they are both associated with DNA repair. They are DNA repair proteins. So the protein product that's made from each of these genes is involved in DNA repair and some other functions as well. We're going to talk about those later on in this lesson. And these would both be considered tumor suppressor genes. So whenever there's a mutation in tumor suppressor genes, that's going to increase the risk for cancer. Now there are important epidemiological facts regarding mutations in both BRCA1 and BRCA2. So BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations are more common in certain populations, and those populations are the following. Patients below the age of 30 who develop breast cancer. So if an individual develops breast cancer at a very young age, less than 30, they have a very, very high risk or very, very high chance that they have a BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation. Another patient population that is more likely to have BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutations is male patients who develop breast cancer. So male patients that develop breast cancer only account for approximately 1% of all breast cancer patients. So if a male patient develops breast cancer, they are more likely to have a BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation. And then the Ashkenazi Jewish population has a very high rate of BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations. So it's estimated that 1 in 40 Ashkenazi Jewish women have a BRCA mutation. So very, very high rates in this population. And Ashkenazi Jewish populations have particular mutations in BRCA1 and BRCA2. So it's important to recognize these particular gene mutations because BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene mutations account for the majority of autosomal dominant inherited breast cancers. So it's going to be very important to think about. And another important point to note is that mutations in BRCA1 are reported to occur in approximately 7% of families with multiple breast cancers and are reported at even higher prevalence levels if there are family members who have both breast cancer and ovarian cancers. So BRCA1 mutations would be present in 40% of families who have a family history of both breast and ovarian cancer. So it's very important to think about these particular gene mutations when we see a family history of both breast cancer and ovarian cancer and some other cancers we're going to talk about later on in this lesson. Let's talk about what BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes and the gene products are responsible for. So as mentioned before, they are involved in DNA repair. So if there is some issue with a break in the DNA, for instance, normal BRCA1 and BRCA2 take care of that break. They mend the break in the DNA. So they aid in repair of breaks in the DNA. And breaks in the DNA can come from the following. Radiation, so this could be medical-induced radiation or from radiation in the environment. It can also come from smoking, alcohol consumption, even ultraviolet light. So if there's any of these types of factors that are affecting a patient, this can increase the risk of breaks in the DNA. And again, BRCA1 and BRCA2, along with many other proteins, are involved in fixing breaks in the DNA. 
Now, BRCA1 and BRCA2 have other functions as well, including regulation of cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is the movement of chromosomes when cells are dividing. So that's going to be a very important function as well. So both BRCA1 and BRCA2 are involved in regulation of cytokinesis, but BRCA1 is also involved in protein ubiquitination as well. Now let's talk about the associated cancers with mutations in BRCA1 and BRCA2. So BRCA1 and BRCA2 are known to increase the risk of several cancers, and these include breast cancer, as mentioned before, ovarian cancer. So those are going to be more commonly known cancers that are more likely to occur in patients with mutations in BRCA1 and BRCA2. But some other important cancers that are also more likely to occur if a patient has a mutation in BRCA1 and BRCA2 is prostate cancer. So it's going to be a very important one because as male patients get older, they're more likely to get prostate cancer. And if they have a mutation in one of these genes, they are at an even higher risk of prostate cancer. And then another important cancer is going to be pancreatic cancer. Patients with BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations are at an increased risk for pancreatic cancer as well. So here's a little chart showing the cancer risk with both mutations in BRCA1 and BRCA2. So percentages are going to be absolute cancer risk. So if we were to look at BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations, if a patient were to have either of these mutations, they have a roughly similar percentage of risk for getting breast cancer. Pancreatic cancer is going to be more common in BRCA2 mutations. Ovarian cancers are going to be more likely if a patient has BRCA1 mutation. And prostate cancer is going to be more likely to occur in BRCA2 mutations. So the ones I want you to see here, the ones I'm going to point out more specifically, are breast cancer risk in males. It's going to be even higher with BRCA2 mutations. With regards to ovarian cancer, patients are going to be at a higher risk for ovarian cancer with BRCA1 mutations. And then with regards to prostate cancer, patients are going to be at a higher risk for prostate cancer if they have BRCA2 mutations. But having said all that, both BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations increase the risk of all of these cancers. These are just more specific findings. But it's also been found that BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations are associated with other cancers as well. And we're going to talk about those in the next slide. So this is recently reported in the manuscript entitled Expansion of Cancer Risk Profile for BRCA1 and BRCA2 Pathogenic Variants. And it was published in JAMA Oncology in 2022. So this was a case control study involving over 63,000 patients. And they looked at 14 different common cancer types to see whether or not cancers were more likely to occur in patients with mutations in either BRCA1 or BRCA2. And what was found was that mutations in BRCA1 were highly associated with biliary tract cancer. Now, some other evidence shows that BRCA2 can also increase the risk for this type of cancer as well. But from the study, it was found that mutations in BRCA1 were associated with biliary tract cancer. Mutations in BRCA2 were found to be associated with esophageal cancer. And mutations in either BRCA1 or BRCA2 were found to be associated with gastric cancer or cancer of the stomach. So as you can see, mutations in these BRCA genes not only increase the types of cancer we talked about earlier on in the session, but they are associated with these other types of cancer, biliary tract cancer, esophageal cancer, and gastric cancer. So some of these gastrointestinal types of cancer are important to think about if a patient has some family history of other BRCA-related cancers. So if you want to learn more about other types of cancer, please check out my oncology playlist. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.